Welcome back to CW Iowa Live. Lou and Jackie being joined by Michael Jenkins, attorney at law, bankruptcy attorney at law. And we're here to talk about something that's really going to open your eyes. Seriously, when we discussed just the off air here a couple of seconds ago, my jaw almost hit the ground, Mike, didn't it? It did. Yeah, but we're talking about people that get uh, these payday loans, but not just regular payday loans. Yeah, um, my topic today is actually um, how to avoid debt collection scams and kind of part of this is um, internet payday loans. And so many people are probably familiar with uh, the local payday loan places where you go in and you need $500 and you give them a check of yours to hold until next payday and uh, those have pretty high interest rates and by the time it comes to pay those, uh, the person's usually having financial hard times anyway, so they need another payday loan so they can cover their expenses after paying back the payday loan. Mm -hmm. People so are looking for fast cash. Exactly, and unfortunately these are sort of desperate people that uh, don't really have a lot of financial opportunities, and so that appears to be the justification for these companies' existence. They think they provide a service because these people can't go to conventional banks or other places to get loans, but um, most many people would tend to disagree as to what kind of service they're actually providing. Okay, but, but the local guys, you said it usually it caps off about 500 bucks, right? Yeah, at least those are the ones that I've seen. And so then there's these places that are available on the internet, which are just really bad news. And they change their names repeatedly, and you can get larger sums of cash. And I, I certainly hope I'm not going to give anybody any ideas of new places they can go to get money because, again, I'll emphasize these places are really bad. So they have really high interest rates in the hundreds of percent. Um, hundreds yeah. of percent. Well, the, as you stated before, if you're already struggling with paying bills or whatever your financial needs are, how are you going to pay interest on money that you really already don't have that you need to pay back? Well, most of them aren't going to pay it back. Right. Um, so they just lose that money, or what happens? Well, the money, the, these places will draw money out of the bank until there's no money to draw out of the bank. and Because then, they have your information, they can continue to draw. Right. Uh, and the easiest thing is you just close the account, and right. then they can't be drawn out of the account any longer. So these companies, unfortunately, many of them, I, we found, are um, not necessarily... Um, in the United States, because it's the internet, they could be anywhere. anywhere right. So we've encountered some companies that are located on different islands, some that are um, really? that located on Indian reservations, so they're not necessarily subject to the consumer protection laws or even the state laws in the United States. And so they play by a different set of rules, and these things are just available. Well, the bad thing, and what gets people into these collection scams is, and this is just my own personal opinion, but I think when people go to these companies, I think their names get on customer lists, I think they're traded and sold to other places, because people get phone calls, clients of mine, uh, many clients of mine have gotten phone calls, and almost every one of them have had some type of internet payday loan oh, really? uh, at one point in their life in the last few years. And a message will be left saying, uh, you need to call so-and-so uh, about this payday loan that you got. Um, charges are being filed against you and your case number is such and such. And if you don't call us by a certain time today, uh, you, you know we will have you arrested. So people will call in a panic uh, and believe what they're hearing and it's all false. I mean, nobody can call on the telephone and threaten you with criminal prosecution. That is a crime in and of itself. Uh, but, you know, people aren't sophisticated and they don't know this, and so they will get tricked into uh, let, you know, letting them have money out of their bank account. They will get tricked into doing basically, a, a, at the moment, uh, uh, funds transfer from their bank to this place. Yeah, you never want to do that, do you? You never want to give strangers access to your bank account or give them any of your bank account information. Right. You don't know who these people are, and in this case, these people are criminals. And um, now you've given them access to your banking information. Wow. So you never want to do that. So when these places call, um, if, if it's a legitimate debt collection place, first of all, more, more often than not, you'll have been sent a letter prior to getting a phone call. But if you're not, you should ask for a letter to be sent. Uh, it'll identify the company that's supposedly collecting the debt. Uh, it'll tell you where they're from. Uh, it'll give you a phone number. Uh, these companies that are out there, 
when they come in on phone numbers, I think these are spoofed phone numbers. Right. They'll have 855, and then when you try to call back after a day or two, all of a sudden that number's not working anymore. And so you, you just, you, you've got to verify these things and just don't believe people that call you on the phone. You can ask them what's the date of the loan, how much was it for, those type of things. Um, you can ask them to send you a copy of the loan. If it's a legitimate place that you really did take out a loan, then they should have a copy of it that they would be able to send. If you're dealing with a, a legitimate debt collector, collecting on a credit card statement, or if you had a bank loan that went bad, if you ask for copies of statements or a copy of the bank loan that you signed, they can produce it because it's legit. These what if you just ask them questions about your account? If you didn't provide any information, okay, what account are you trying to get information from? And would they be able to provide you with, a, with your full account number if it's legitimate? Um, well, they're not going to be able to provide uh, most likely a copy or a, a, the bank account information because mm -hmm. they're not going to have that. That was just that's what they're looking for. Well, they want to get money out of yeah. it, but the loan was just given and deposited into that account. But yeah, it would be a good question. Uh, please provide the account number that the loan was deposited right. into. And if, and sometimes if you ask enough questions, uh, these places will eventually just hang up uh, on the person because they they just don't want to uh, get into trouble. And um, it's very difficult to track these people, too. Um, we've gone so far as to contact the Attorney General's office here in Iowa for certain clients that uh, were just repeatedly getting pestered by these companies, and they were calling them at their jobs and other things, and, and we were told that um, there's really very little the authorities wow. can even do to track them down. Uh, I'd been told uh, that um, even some of the investigators had gotten these kind of calls, uh, you know, tr demanding that they pay a certain debt that wasn't theirs. And um, there's just a lot of bad stuff out there. So you just can't believe people, what they tell you on the phone. You ask for verification and make them send you things. And don't give any strangers access to your bank account. Heck, not even legitimate debt collectors. You shouldn't just give them access to your bank account information. If they want a payment, just mail it to them. Uh, you, there's just it's you a lot don't know easier, who you're a lot safer, with. a lot safer. Now, speaking about getting phone calls that aren't legitimate, what about these fake IRS calls that are coming in? We have about a minute left. Yeah, that's another thing that's out there. People, and this has been on the news. People get calls, and the messages are being left. This is the Internal Revenue Service calling, right. and you owe a tax debt, and you better call us because otherwise, bad things are going to be done. You may be arrested. And uh, I've gotten these calls both at the office and at home. Um, <laughs> the, the I've called. I've actually talked to them at the office <laughs> and started uh, trying to play with them and see what they were going to do. Where they came from. And, and uh, when, then they started asking me well what phone number did we call because they wanted I was asking too many things and all of a sudden when I gave my number and it came up with my law firm you know, the <laughs> call got disconnected immediately <laughs> good being, job out of you being a bankruptcy attorney is there ever a good time to use payday loans in my opinion no they okay. should, you should st even though the, the legitimate places you should stay away from those there they make your situation worse rather than better all okay right. now Good folks yeah, this morning. a lot of things going on here we talked about a lot of different things if you'd like to talk to uh, Michael again uh, here's the number to get a hold of him 255-1855 or you can uh, jump on just drop an email info at Iowa bankruptcy law Dot com. Uh, great information as always. I'm sure you help somebody out there. Save, <laughs> save a little bit of cash and keep it where it belongs. We'll hope so. That's the whole idea. Thank you so much. We will be right back. It is 849 right now. You are watching CW Iowa Live. Totally serious news coming up next.